There are several little tricks that we can use to achieve the final look of our image. Some of them will and some will not work, but we will never know unless we try them. It all depends on the image. I will try some of those tricks on the video that we were creating during the last two episodes. This is a green screen footage composited over the background like this. As you can see, I decided to change the background. This one comes from stockfootageforfree.com. You can register and log into your account, then start browsing. And here we have the section Nature and Animals, and that's the one, stock footage of time-lapse Rockies. And here you have the standard definition and high definition version of this clip. We are working on the video, so I have a feeling that it's better to use the video as the background instead of still photo. I changed the background so I had to apply some other color correction to it, but it all is done using the color balance note, where I simply change some of the settings to make it fit better with our green screen footage. So here's the color correction and then I desaturated this a little bit using the trick that I showed you in one of the previous episodes, which is mixing the black and white version of the image with the original colorful image using a certain factor. So that's how it looks like and this is our final composite. The second image that I will use is this great model of Ferrari created by Jonathan Williamson. He has set up everything for cycles and studio environment and I decided to convert everything to Blender internal render engine and place this car in this outdoor environment. There are quite a few nodes that are involved in achieving the final looks that you see right here. I will walk you through all of them, explaining what each of them is responsible for and how I came up with this final setup and how come that I managed to find things that I really want. But not in this episode, here we will be focusing on the final touches. Let's first take care about this video. I would like to give it a little bit of a film look. The first thing that I will do has nothing to do with the film look, but I have a feeling that the overall saturation is a little bit too high. So a simple trick, converter RGB to black and white, connect it to the final composite and mix it with the original using a certain factor. I will plug the black and white version to the upper socket and the colorful version to the lower socket so this way, the higher the factor, the more saturated the image is. So now we can not only desaturate the image, but also boost the saturation. Setting the factor to something higher than one gives us something like this. But our goal is to desaturate this. So let's set this factor to something like 0.7 maybe. And that's the intensity of the colors that I am looking for. Sometimes it's good to add some glow to the image, overall glow. We can use the glare node for this, filter glare, change the type to fog glow. Let's pass our image through this and take a look at it. Not much changed because we have the threshold set too high. Only the values that exceed one will be influenced by this node. So let's lower it to, I don't know, 0 0.7 maybe. 0.6. The lower the threshold, the more color ranges will be influenced by this note. Here we can change the quality to high, let's say, and here we have the control over the size of this glow. We can set the size to 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's all. We have also another parameter here, mix parameter. If we set it to minus 1, it's as if this note didn't exist. If we set it to 1, we have the glow only. Zero is 50-50 mix between the glow and the original image. So as you can see, we don't have much control over the glow when we are using just this node. So let's maybe try to set up everything manually and this way we will get the better control over what we are doing. I will delete this node and first I will set the threshold. Let's pass our image through the color ramp. Take a look at it and adjust those sliders. The brighter the colors here, the stronger the glow will be. We can as well move this slider, but I will probably leave it at its initial position. So that's the threshold. Now I will multiply this by the original image. So let's add a mix node, multiply blending mode, take the image and multiply it by this ramp. Okay, that's fine. Now we can blur it, filter blur. 
Let's change the type to fast Gaussian. Set the strength, 10 maybe. Take a look at it. Let's see how it looks like when we use the Gaussian type. Turn on the gamma and maybe bookie. And now we can add this to the original image. So another mix node, add blending mode, and let's take our image and add this one to the image. And that's the result that we get. We can control the blur amount, let's set it to 5 maybe, or we can use some high values, but control the strength of the glow by changing the factor here. Let's set it to something not that high, I don't know, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and now when we are looking at the final result, we can adjust the ramp. And let's take a look. This is before and this is after. Let's see how it looks like when we increase the blur amount to 15 maybe. Now there is also another thing that we can do. We can give this glow some tint. And it's very easy because we can simply multiply this glow by some color. So let's add a color mix, plug it here, change the blending mode to multiply, and we can now change this color from white to, I don't know, let's see something like this. Here we can use very strong colors, it's not a problem, because we are operating only on the very high color values. So even though we are using the saturation of 100%, almost 100%, it doesn't influence that strongly, but it gives a little bit different feeling. Let's see before and after. The change is really subtle and chances are that you won't even see it here because of the video compression, but it's worth a try. Let's maybe increase the power of this glow. I will probably finally leave it at this low value, but let's see what happens if we set it to 0.6, let's say. Now this orange tint is a little bit more visible, but we want our glow to be really subtle, so let's set it back to, I don't know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.15. Before, after. Really subtle change, as you can see. Okay, let's now try a little bit different approach to glow, but now I will work on this Ferrari render. I will add the glare node, Pass my render through this, change the type to fog glow, let's increase the size to maximum of 9, set some lower threshold, set the mix amount to 1, now we are seeing which areas are influenced by this glow, let's lower the threshold, and now let's instead of trying to mix this with the original image, let's add it to the image. So I will add the color mix, add blending mode, Take the image and add the glow to it. Before, after. As you can see, the most influenced area is the background here. It is simply the brightest. But we would like to influence the car a little bit more. We could try to isolate those brightest areas using a color ramp or trying to key out those areas. But I have the better control over it because I got it as a separate component. So let's not take care about the look of the background right now. Let's focus on the car. I will lower the threshold even more and try to increase the factor of this add node. Before, after. Let's see what happens if we set the threshold to zero. In this case, we definitely would want to lower this factor. Before, after. This is definitely too strong effect, but I simply want to make it obvious. I would definitely set this value to something 0 0.1, 0 0.2 maybe, before, after, and probably I wouldn't use the threshold of 0. Let's make it a little bit higher and see before, after. So that's the glow. We can use the glare node, control the amount of the glow using the mix factor, or we can set the mix factor to 1 and simply add it to the original image, or do as I did here, where I set up everything manually. 
I control the threshold by the color ramp, multiply the image with the result of this color ramp, blur it, give some tint to the glow, and then add this result to the original image. And here's the final result that I get. I decided to use the ramp like this, so in fact it's very close to the default settings of the ramp. I multiplied my image by this ramp, then blurred it, multiplied it by the color. This time I used not that saturated color and added this to the original image with a factor of 0.2. And the result is really subtle. Let's take a look before, after, and let's leave it as is. Now a few words about grain. There is not much footage that nowadays is shot on negative. And one of the characteristic features of the negative is the grain. Grain is in fact a kind of an error. But at the same time, if we add a little bit of the grain to our footage that was shot on some digital cameras, we achieve more classy look. In case of such composites, grain may help to blend the foreground a little bit better to the background. In case of images created in 3D, grain may make them look a little bit more natural, as if they were shot with a camera. So how can we add grain? We don't have an effect, add grain. We could try to create our own grain using the dithering, noise textures, clouds textures, but somehow noise will always look like a noise. So the best thing that we can do is to use the actual footage of the grain. There are some resources of such footage. Here's the example of one of them, rgrain.com. They have the plates of the grain that mimic different kinds of negative. Unfortunately, they're not for free. We can try to find some other stock footage of the grain, but as well, it's not that easy to find anything for free that is good enough quality. Here's another example from Getty Images. But when we look at the prices, we would rather forget about it. All those footages resemble the real grain, but in fact, most of them are anyway computer generated. So if you really want to spend some money on grain plates, you can do it. But I have created the plate that we will be playing with. It's full HD QuickTime movie with photo JPEG codec. I would call the quality of it not great, but acceptable. It's just one second of the grain footage, but we can very easily make a loop out of it. From the technical point of view, I have created this clip such that it behaves exactly the same as most of the footages that you can get from the site similar to ones that I showed you. The authors of those plates always tell you to place the plate over your footage with the overlay blending mode. This is how it behaves if you do so in any editing system or applications like After Effects. If you feel that the effect is too strong, you can always lower the opacity of the plate So that's how it works, fast and easy, no rendering required. It resembles the real grain, but it's not. Many applications have plugins that add grain to your footage. The behavior of such plugins is a little bit better than simply placing the plate over your footage with the overlay blending mode. This is how one of such plugins work. It's not that easy to see the difference, but if we look closer, we see how it influences the dark areas of the image, and that's, with no doubt, more natural than this. But that's not a problem, we can achieve the similar results in Blender. But there's another issue that we have here. Overlay blending mode. The algorithm that is used in overlay blending mode works such that when we have the mid-gray color, 50% of each channel, it doesn't influence the image at all. Let me place the solid that has the values of 0.5 for each channel over everything and change the blending mode to overlay. As you can see, it didn't at all change the image. I can move the solid little bit to the side, and here in the middle is the border between the area influenced by the solid and the, the one that is not influenced by it. And as you can see, it's exactly the same. The problem here is that the midpoint is calculated in gamma-corrected color space. So everything that here is treated as mid-gray, 0.5 for each channel, is in fact a lot lower value in our linear color space. So when we try to recreate this behavior in Blender, we have to take it into account. So first let's see what happens if we overlay this over this in Blender's linear color space. It's a lot darker than it should be. So if we want to recreate exactly the same behavior as in non-linear color space, 
We have to use the trick that I showed you in the episode about color management, which is applying the gamma of 1 divided by 2.2 to both inputs. Here we have the gamma node, let's plug it here, duplicate it and plug it here, and use the gamma of 1 divided by 2.2, here and here. And then we have to apply the gamma of 2.2 to the result. So here we recreated exactly the same behavior as we have in editing systems. But that's not our goal, we want to make it look better. Here is exactly the same, but I passed the grain through the scale node with a render size option. Remember that this footage is full HD and our render size is a little bit smaller, so I simply wanted to make it fit our render size. When I say that I want to make it look better, I'm not talking about the strength of the effect, which we can easily control by setting the factor of this overlay node. Let's lower it to 0.5, and now it's much better. But we don't have any grain here in the dark areas. This is simply how non-linear overlay works. We can use a little bit different approach. First, let's as well work in non-linear color space. But instead of using the overlay blending mode, I will simply add the grain to the footage. So let's change the blending mode from overlay to add. Set the factor to 1. It is of course not what we want, but when we subtract 0.5 for every channel or value of 0.5 let's change the blending mode to subtract we get this now we can control the strength of the grain by setting the factor here 0.3 maybe 0.5 to make it more visible but we are still working in non-linear color space however here when we subtracted mid gray from the grain we have some negative values we make use of those negative values here when we add this grain to our image. Adding negative values is in fact subtracting and this way we get the result like this. Okay, so now let's try to make it work in linear color space. We would definitely want to add grain to the image. That's the proper way. So let's do it. Mix, add blending mode and add the grain to the image. It is of course too bright but we have to subtract mid gray from the grain. So let's duplicate this one, plug it here, change the blending mode to subtract and let's first try to set the value here to 0.5 mid gray. Definitely not what we wanted but in this case the color that we want to subtract is mid gray in non-linear color space. So let's simply add the gamma node, set the color here to 0.5, gamma to 2.2 and use this as the second input of this subtract node. And that's a lot better, but of course the effect is very strong, so let's lower it, 0.2 maybe. If we want to, we can desaturate the grain a little bit. So simple trick, converter RGB to black and white, pass the grain through it and mix it with the original. If we lower the factor, we are desaturating the grain. We can as well try to blur the grain a little bit. Filter blur, fast Gaussian, and the amount shouldn't be higher than 2. Let's set it to 1 maybe. 2. And here's our result. The purists say that this is the proper way of adding the grain to the footage. But I wanted to show you different ways, so you can choose the one that you will like the most. And this is how the final composite of our green screen footage looks like when we add a little bit of the grain to it.